What's happening, Remote Pilot 101? Jason here, a favorite topic of mine today. We're talking about weather. And I'm actually gonna share with you inside version three of our new Remote Pilot 101 course. And I wanna play the video in its entirety so you can see it. Many of you have accessed this already. You've been inside the new Remote Pilot 101 version three course, which now lives on m0a.com, making us one of the largest and preferred part 107 and just FAA test prep providers on the market. We're blessed and thankful to be able to say that. It's because of an amazing family like you all. So let's play this clip just like you would see it if you're a customer, and many of you are, inside of our course. So we're gonna wrap up this weather module of the Remote Pilot 101 course by going over some details that you will probably find and see on your knowledge test, and most likely, you're gonna see a lot to do with TAFs and METAR. So let's go ahead and let's start there. What happens when you see speci? Speci means it's a special METAR. That METAR has been updated before its usual time of 55 minutes past the hour. So when something changes significantly, like the weather shifts dramatically, visibility decreases, a special METAR is issued. What about RMK? What does that mean on a METAR? That's for our remarks, which is where any modifiers for our weather would actually be. So what if we see the modifier BR? That's the abbreviation for mist. Remember we said, remember that? It's saying baby rain. And we know RA is rain. Sometimes in the remarks section, you'll see the letters RAB or RAE with a number attached to it. That tells us that the rain began and at what time? And RAE, rain, ended and at what time? So if you see it like this on a METAR, this tells us the rain began 34 minutes after the hour and the rain ended 45 minutes after the hour. Here are a few more things you might see on a METAR. The letters TS, an abbreviation for thunderstorm. SN is snow. FU is for smoke. FZ is short for freezing. FG means there is fog. CIG means ceiling which is defined as what? What's the definition of a ceiling? The lowest broken or overcast layer above the ground. The letters BKN tell us the sky is broken. Broken is five-eighths to six-eighths of coverage. OVC overcast, that is a solid layer of clouds. Remember this, scattered clouds are not a ceiling. Few clouds are not a ceiling. Overcast or broken clouds are your ceilings. Let's now switch gears. Let's talk about the difference between true and magnetic north. True north is known as our geographic north. It literally is the top of the world. Magnetic north is where the Earth's magnetic field show north actually is. So when I look at a VFR sectional chart, you'll see magenta lines known as lines of variation. They show the difference between true north and magnetic north. You'll need to know the difference between true and magnetic north because winds can be given to us in relation to true north or in relation to magnetic north. And so some of the questions you will see on your knowledge exam will ask about true north or magnetic north. So read those questions carefully to determine what the FAA is actually even asking you. True north. When you read the winds in a METAR or TAF, the winds are in relation to true north. The way to remember this is, when you read it, it's true. Now let's consider magnetic north. Airport runways are actually laid out in reference to magnetic north. And for that reason, when you hear a weather report over the automated weather observation system or the uh, airport's terminal information system, ASOS, AWOS, ATIS, remember looking at those frequencies, how pilots hear the weather. Those winds are given to us in relation to magnetic north. Remember the phrase, when you hear it, it's magnetic. The only exception is when you actually call a flight service station and the briefer reads you the weather uh, to those winds. Those are actually true north. They are reading a METAR to you. Yes, you're hearing it. I just told you when you hear it, it's magnetic. If you read it, it's true. Well, a briefer, if you call a weather briefer on the phone, they're gonna read you a METAR. It's still in reference to true north. So remember that. 
And that can be a big difference. If you're flying in Alaska, Washington State even, there can be a big difference between true and magnetic north. So knowing where the winds are coming from and are they in reference to true or magnetic north uh, will prove beneficial in your flight planning. Let's switch gears one more time and let's now talk about frost. Frost happens on cool, clear, calm nights when the temperature of the ground and objects on the surface can cause temperatures of the surrounding air to drop actually below the dew point. The dew point is the temperature to which air must be cooled to become saturated. You see dew on plants and cars and the like in the morning. When the temperature is below freezing, that moisture, that dew is deposited on the surface, it freezes and instead we have frost. While dew is certainly no threat to small unmanned aircraft, frost definitely is a safety hazard. Frost interrupts the smooth flow over the propellers of the drone, which reduces lift while simultaneously increasing drag. It can make it difficult for the drone to fly and control. Because of this, you need to be sure to thoroughly remove any frost from the drone. Uh, maybe you've left it outdoors by accident. Consider bringing it inside. Listen, these are expensive things. I know you're probably thinking who leaves their drone outside, but you'd be surprised it happens and it could happen sometimes. So again, the best way to get frost off is a combination simply of heat and time. If you're out in the field, put in your car for a little bit, run the heater just for a little bit. If you're really in a pinch, it's not my preferred method, but you could use like a plastic credit card as well to get that frost off again, or rather you leave it in the car just for 10 minutes and then dry it off after that because you could end up uh, nicking the body, nicking the propellers, puncturing a battery, anything like that. So best to just warm it up uh, somewhere inside. So that wraps up weather. Weather plays such a huge component in our day-to-day -day real world operations and you're going to continue to see it time and time again on the actual knowledge test. So even as a remote pilot, we have to understand weather, but most importantly, we have to respect weather. Because we don't respect weather, we're gonna end up hurting ourselves, hurting somebody else, and just putting us into a lot of liabilities that are super unnecessary. So listen, Remote Pilot 101, now m0a.com, thank you so much for all that you do. Hope you're enjoying the version three of the course. If you haven't checked it out already, you can go to m0a.com to learn more about that. Links all down below in the descriptions. I can't wait to read your comments, whether on Facebook, on YouTube, or on m0a.com. Have an amazing rest of your day, and most importantly, remember that a good pilot is always learning. Have a great day, everyone. We'll see you.